Hello and welcome to your in-depth weekly horoscope for week commencing the 15th of August. I'm going to give you the key strands to look out for, but please stay with me. I will then dive deep to share with you each of the 12 zodiac signs from Aries through to Pisces in greater detail. Now this is a week when Mars is very much at the center of the celestial story. And this is because he is going to be moving into a new home on Saturday. But Mars usually takes 45 days or six weeks to transit through each zodiac sign. But when it moves into Gemini on Saturday, it's going to be there for seven months and six days. So a really extended uh, period of time. This is because every two years, Mars goes into a retrograde. Last time, it was in the sign it governs of Aries. This time, Gemini, very much about we, how we interact, particularly in terms of our communication, can bring more drama, can also push us to get a bit fitter and more active in the months to come. However, this week does begin with a rather limiting opposition between the Sun and Saturn. Perhaps there's a relationship issue that does need very carefully considering. But Mars is going to be squaring up with the Sun this week and also embracing the quarter moon in Taurus on Friday. And that's saying to us not to be, in too, not to be too impulsive when it comes to our romantic situation. Funnily enough, Venus, also in the glamorous Leo, along with the Sun, is forging a beautiful link with Jupiter, the planet of fortune. Now, maybe it is the case that with Jupiter going backwards, we could be feeling a little bit less optimistic, but these two planets are known as the greater and lesser benefits. So the two planets of fortune. So something positive can still come through at the heart of this week. But it is true that Mercury in its home zone of Virgo does go into an opposition with Neptune later this week. So if we are planning anything that requires some precision, we really need to concentrate. But if there is something we want to work towards that's much more tangible, the angle between Mars and Pluto before it moves into Gemini is actually very, very good for worldly stuff as long as we use the passion and power of that combination in the right kind of way. So we're not trying to just get what we need from a situation, but if we work in a productive way and very systematic and step by step, the passion and the willpower of that combination can really bring some results. But later in the week, yes, we have that uh, uh, transition of Mars into Gemini. Now, if you'd like to check out my deep dive video, please see the link beneath this video. But also on Saturday, Mercury enters its shadow period. It won't go into retrograde in the sign of Libra until the 9th of September. But it is going to next week uh, move into the sign of Libra, it's in Virgo at the moment. So just be aware that when it comes to those communications, the need for clarity is vital, but the passion of Mars moving into Gemini will certainly give us all a little bit more uh, capacity to articulate our, our ideas or ventilate uh, our ideas in a positive way. And please stay with me now for each of your 12 zodiac signs. If you would like to embrace more serious astrology, if you give me three pieces of personal birth data, of time, date and place of birth, I can give you a roadmap that can guide you for the rest of your life. Also, my special package of 30% off. If you order now, I'll give you your year 2023 personal forecast plus the rest of this year three. Please see the link beneath this video. And finally, I've raced through the 101,000 subs mark. I'd be so grateful if you've yet to subscribe if you did so now. 
If you have already, thank you so much for your support, but please click or tap on the bell notification symbol if you've yet to do so. So Pisces, your week commencing the 15th of August forecast. See some really contrasting, even competing energies at the start of this week. In terms of your general vitality and spark, I actually feel it could be a little on the low side. If you've got quite a lot going on in your situation at the moment, especially demands to support other people, whether it's through your work or your personal situation, that can be impacting on you and leaving you feeling somewhat drained. If your situation doesn't have so many demands on it at the moment, there's a much greater chance that you can work with the energy between Pluto and Mars. This is one of the most galvanizing planetary aspects of all, a trine between these two. Mars is very much about our ego and the third house where it is is about our ideas and the 11th house where Pluto is can be about the network or it can be about our higher ideals and values. So if you're someone who's very idealistic, some kind of cause or group could really grab your attention as long as it's quite a supportive environment. If not, I think you might find yourself just wanting to retreat a little bit in the first few days. But Venus is forging an absolutely delicious link to Jupiter. If you have a, 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 a clearing out this week, perhaps um, a, a declutter could release up some items that actually you can sell, which in turn some, can generate some cash. But also Jupiter in the second solar house can, of course, in itself, despite its retrograde, be quite lucky. But I think that link to Venus could suggest that when it comes to your work situation, your people skills and diplomacy can still be very important in attracting good fortune. But there's a lot of nervous energy at the heart of this week on Friday when the moon moves forwards in house three and links with uh, Mars. And you could feel quite on edge on Friday and that duo then is in a right angle with the sun. Third, sixth house energy is quite frenetic. Suddenly from feeling a bit depleted earlier in the week, you could feel a bit hyper and be trying to cram in too much. But by Saturday, Mars makes its way into your uh, fellow uh, mutable sign of Gemini. Now, the common thread with mutable signs is flexibility. Now Mars is about thrust of course and it's also about instant gratification and in the fourth house where it's going to be through to March the 25th next year the chances are you could feel quite restless in where you live or how you live there. If a change has been something that's on your mind anyway I think it's almost certain you will move during that seven month and six day period. Just be aware the Mars retrograde begins on the 30th of October but it does square up with Neptune your ruler all through October and all through November and that's probably not the best of time to make any firm decision or firm change because your energy could be uh, a little lower but also your drive can be dissipated somewhat. But Mars moving into the fourth house is very good if you want to uh, make some physical changes to your home, build an extension, refit a kitchen. Um, these kind of improvements that the drive and the physicality of Mars in the fourth house can work very well. But Mars in the fourth house can be quite defensive. So just be conscious of that. And as the week draws to a close, Mercury in your sector of relating, but now moving into its pre-retrograde uh, shadow, goes into an opposition with Neptune in your sign. Things can seem as clear as mud. So if you are discussing things with other people, they may see things differently to you. They may find it hard to understand you. You may find it harder to articulate how you're feeling. Just a lot of foggy conditions towards the end of the week. So if there is something that you want to talk about that's really important to you, particularly that job or work situation where if you have been feeling drained with that Saturnian energy in your 12th house of 
where you've given everything which Pisces people can do, I think next week you have an opportunity to really start thinking about where you should direct your energies and who you should be supporting going forwards.